All right, Facebook, we're out here live uh, at Gateway West along I-10 for this major uh, incident that happened this morning. I'm going to step out of the way just so you can take a look at it. Again, I'm along the Gateway just past Joe Battle uh, heading west. That You're looking at I-10 West. There's about 30 uh, emergency vehicles, police cars, uh, everything from the sheriff's office to El Paso police to uh, traffic. Everyone, there looks like they're opening up the gateway, uh, back opening up the gateway now. Uh, they're allowing traffic to once again uh, flow in the area. But you're still looking at I-10 heading west, just past um, uh, the loop. And again, it is, uh, as you can see, it is it is still very, very, an act very much an active scene. Um, actually, police just stopped traffic again here along the gateway. Uh, oh, and now they're now they're allowing it to, to go again. Details are very limited, but this is what we know so far. Shortly after 1115 this morning, El Paso police said that they were assisting El Paso County Sheriff deputies in a pursuit near Saragossa and Gateway West, which is not too far from here. Now, at this time, as you can see, this is apparently where the incident ended along on I-10. Again, this is on I-10 where all these emergency vehicles, police units are located. Uh, they have the, the highway actually uh, taped off right now. What you're looking at right here is Gateway West. They just opened back up just seconds ago uh, to allow traffic to flow. So apparently what, whoever they were after this morning, it looks like uh, the, the incident is, is finally uh, clearing up. Uh, and once again, they are allowing traffic to flow along the gateway. Again, this is Gateway West just past the loop. Uh, maybe uh, you know just a couple blocks past the loop along Gateway West, so you can you can see that the uh, incident. If you can look into the uh, to the highway, it's still very much an active scene here on the highway. All lanes on I-10 heading west are closed, so do find an alternate route if this is uh, your usual travel on uh, you know on on, on the, during the lunch hour. Again, this is along the highway. On I-10, heading west, it is closed. All lanes are closed. They actually have, I don't know if you can see that, they actually have tape off the area on the highway. Again, you have everything from Border Patrol to the Sheriff's Department to El Paso Police to the uh, El Paso Constable. Everyone's out here uh, still trying to work this scene. But again, just moments ago, they have opened up Gateway West uh, along the highway. Again, we will keep you posted and updated as more information does come in. Uh, but again, it looks like the gateway heading west is open, but I-10 heading west is still closed at this time. Again, this is at I-10 and Joe Battle heading west. Just We are literally just blocks from, from the loop. Uh, if this is your, your usual travel, do find an alternate route. We'll stay out here and bring you all the very latest both on air, on Facebook, and online at CBS4Local.com. For right now, live in Far East El Paso, Justin Creese, CBS4 and News. Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two, three, mic check. Is everybody good? All right, thank you everyone for coming last minute. I know we did have a public incident this morning in the city of Socorro. We are gonna be going ahead and doing a press conference, giving the public a little bit of information on the ongoing status of that event. I do wanna go ahead and give an overview on how the press conference is gonna go. We'll go ahead and do the press conference first in English, 
and then questions in English right after. Then we'll do it in Spanish with questions in Spanish right after that. Uh, please silence your cell phones just while everything is being recorded. We are going live on the city's Facebook page. If anyone has any inquiries on to getting footage of that, they can go ahead and reach the city of Socorro at virreta at costx.us or phone number 915-319-0125 for the public information office. With that being said, I'd like to go ahead and introduce the panel behind me. Representing the Socorro Police Department, we do have Chief David Burton. From Constable Precinct 6 office, we have Constable Javier Garcia. Constable Precinct 4's office, Constable Luis Aguilar. Constable Precinct 1's office, Constable Oscar Ugarte. Representing the Isleta del Sur Tribal Police Department, we have Chief Robert Martinez. From Texas Department of Public Safety, we have Sergeant Mark Couch. From El Paso Sector Border Patrol, we have Acting Deputy Matthew Combs. From El Paso Police Bomb Squad, we have Lieutenant Ken Long. And representing the City of Socorro's Council, we have Council Representative District 3, Mr. Rudy Cruz. With that being said, I'd like to go ahead and welcome Chief David Burton to the podium. Thank you, Victor. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is David Burton, B-U-R-T-O-N. I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Socorro. Uh, we thought it was important that we hold this press conference this afternoon uh, just so we can put out information um, that uh, assures the public that there is no immediate or imminent threat uh, to any public member at this time. I'm going to go down the list of the events as they occurred today. Um, the information that you're getting is uh, hot off the presses, so to speak. It is brand new. Uh, we will not be able to take any in-depth type uh, questions because, as you can imagine, this is still very much in the investigative stage at this point. We can take some uh, questions at the end, um, and I'll answer them as best I can, but um, I might not have all of the answers for you at this point. Uh, however, we will get those to you uh, later on. So today in the city of Socorro at about 9.20 this morning, um, we went to an address on Las uh, Cienega for a domestic call. Um, the first officer arrived on scene at approximately 9.35. And we were told at that point that there was a male subject inside the residence um, who was involved in a domestic, potentially our suspect, uh, and that we needed to make contact with that individual. So for approximately an hour, uh, the officers on scene attempted to talk this individual into coming outside of the residence. And at about 1031, uh, that individual fled the residence in a, mo in a motor vehicle and then began a pursuit uh, which initially took us out onto Socorro Road towards San Eli. When that individual uh, drove the vehicle to the intersection of Dindinger and Socorro Road, there was a motor vehicle accident. At the same time, there was also a carjacking. The suspect had wrecked his vehicle and took another vehicle to continue the pursuit. That pursuit continued along Socorro Road into San Eli, then back on Socorro Road, back into Socorro, and then went into some side neighborhood roads. For a moment, we lost fi uh, sight of him, uh, and eventually we did pick him back up on Socorro Road. The pursuit from there went on several main roads, including Socorro Road, Alameda, Horizon, Dindinger, Zaragoza, Gateway, and I-10. That lasted from 10.30 until 11.16 a.m., at which time there was a car accident on I-10. The male subject is 27 years old. We're not going to identify him at this point because we need to confirm his identity. And again, you know, we need to make sure that the investigation stage is done thoroughly and completely. That male subject was transported from the scene uh, for injuries uh, and taken to a local hospital. It wasn't just the Socorro Police Department that assisted with uh, ending this uh, pursuit and subsequent shots fired because this individual did shoot at police officers and bystanders as this pursuit uh, took place over the course of about an hour. So I want to thank these individuals that are behind me, uh, inclusive of SISD, Socorro Independent School District, 
uh, and um, the El Paso Police Department uh, because we needed their bomb squad to help us clear the residence uh, based on the fact that the individual had flooded that house with uh, gas. Uh, and that, again, is active and ongoing at this time. So thank you very much to SISD, El Paso PD, uh, DPS, uh, Border Patrol, the, all of the constables' offices, because we couldn't have done it without them. And uh, I'll take any questions that you have at this time. Do we know if the uh, suspect you mentioned he was transported because of injuries? Do we know at this point what type of injuries? Was he shot? Um, and is he still alive at the moment? Yeah, I don't have that. Um, I would have to be out at the scene. The sheriff's office is uh, the lead agency as far as um, any type of use of force uh, from Socorro locally, and then the Texas Rangers from DPS will follow up as far as that. So as far as um, officers uh, shooting that individual, I can't answer that question at this time. How about when he fled from his house? There were officers, like there was officers there, but he fled uh, by the back or back? No, no, he came out the front. But again, you, you have to realize, right, because the officers there at the time, um, they don't expect this level of force to be used against them. Uh, multiple shots fired uh, as, as a result of the pursuit, uh, multiple locations. The last count, I think I had seven, at least seven locations where he was shooting at police officers and or uh, bystanders. Um, but at that time, we're just trying to coax him out of the house. We're just trying to talk him out because obviously we want to end that uh, situation peacefully. So for him to flee, uh, you know, we weren't expecting that. Did he shoot when he was coming out of the house? Not initially, no. Ma as far as the shots were fired, it was, it was throughout from Clint, I believe it was from Clint all the way up until I-10, was it or Gateway West? Um, was it throughout the entire time that he kept firing? Yeah, there, so as far as that's concerned, there's multiple times. So again, investigative wise, right? Now we have to go back and pull the radio logs uh, and the officer's transmissions because the officers call out each time there's a uh, time that they, uh, they either engage the suspect or the suspect fired at them. Um, and I don't want to give you a number uh, and be inaccurate about that. So that's, that's an investigator. I can tell you that during the entire course of this, there were multiple locations and multiple times that that was called out over the radio. Were any officers hit? Pardon? Were any officers hit? Uh, no, I don't have any report of officers being injured at this time. Any civilians injured, uh, including the, the, the accident that happened on Dindinger? The, right, so there is an accident on Dindinger. I don't know the condition of that individual. Um, but no other, so pending that one, no other uh, injuries reported. Chief, what, what was he armed with? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it was a handgun, but I don't know. How difficult, how difficult is, is, is it to stop a pursuit? How difficult is it? So there's devices that are made um, that can do that um, fairly quickly. One of them is a spike, stri uh, spike strips or um, uh, tire deflation devices. There's also tire capture type devices. The problem with that is um, how dynamic the situation is, how quickly it evolves, uh, and if you can get into position in front of this individual in order to deploy those type instruments. Um, in this case, we weren't able to do that. How was he originally stopped? You mentioned he was, a lot of agencies were involved in apprehending him. How was he originally stopped at, where it finally ended? Um, that was a crash. Where he finally stopped, it was a crash. What was he driving? Um, it was a red pickup truck at that point. And that, that was the second carjacked vehicle. Where did he carjack the second one? Uh, on Horizon. And the initial vehicle that he played? The initial vehicle that he fled is in the motor vehicle accident on Dindinger. Uh, the pursuit was uh, happening in an area where there is so many schools. Do we know if it was a lockdown at the moment? There was uh, a, so we did contact our partners. We have a very good partnership with SISD, Scorro Independent School District. We did uh, notify them of what was taking place and I believe they did go into lockdown. So he fled, he got into one crash, carjacked the first car, fled again in that car, got in another crash, Hijacked another car, fled, and then crashed on I-10. Correct. Okay. Chief, how many officers were involved in this? I don't. Uh, we, that, again, that's something that we'll have to go through the investigation, uh, make sure that we have the uh, correct rosters involved, and then I can let you know how many officers exactly were involved. Do you have a ballpark? I don't. I don't. <clears throat> 
So that's a precautionary type um, event. We originally, because we did smell the, the gas when we went to the residence, uh, we did call out uh, El Paso Gas. And again, I, I forgot an agency to thank, so thank you to El Paso Gas for coming out. Um, when they put a reader on the door, uh, they find a very high contact inside. So we did not go inside the residence at that point. Uh, and just as a precaution, then, we would ask the, uh, the bomb squad to come and assist us with that. Was the suspect the only person in the home, or was there someone else with him? No. The, so from the domestic, the partner had managed to leave the residence. So the, at the time that we were handling the initial complaint, it was the officers just trying to make contact with that individual. Was there any case involved in the house? Not that I know of. Just to be good, May, I mentioned there was several agencies involved in this. If you could just name the agencies or at least the number of the agencies. Well, it's every, so it's everyone that you see here. So DPS is involved. Um, the constable's office, one, four, and six. Um, Border Patrol. Um, Isleta del Sur Pueblo, uh, Tigua Police. Um, SISD Police. Uh, and the Sheriff's Office. There was a report that some of the bridges were closed because of the, the street. Do we know any information about that? Or? So I'm not aware of any bridges that were closed that would uh, be directed to our, our uh, brother agency at uh, the Office of Field Operations for CBP. Thank you. I noticed one bruiser that was smashed on the front end. Was that involved in stopping? Is that yeah, so we have reports, again, you know, initial reports, so we have, um, what's been told to me is that I have uh, multiple vehicles that uh, are police vehicles belonging to the city of Socorro that uh, do have varying degrees of damage, um, whether that is from impact with a suspect vehicle or another vehicle or an object um, or gunfire. Okay, that would be part of the investigation that we will discover later on. Who's taking the lead in this investigation as far as to what's going to happen? Or okay, so the criminal side of things will be Socorro Police Department. Uh, because we used force uh, during this pursuit, then the sheriffs on the local level, on the county level, will be handling uh, an outside agency investigation into our use of force, and then on the state level, Ultimately, the Texas Rangers will also do an investigation into the use of force. Is that 10 still closed on what time is going to be, or it's still, or it's open? I believe I-10 is still closed. Do you know what time is going to be? I don't know. Okay. Oh. From yes. work to, to exit? So, the sheriff, again, so because major crime, the sheriff's major crimes are out there doing an active investigation, it is basically up to them as far as when they feel comfortable opening that highway. Do we know if any of the people involved in carjackings were injured? Uh, I don't have any reports of injuries from the carjackings. I should say this, though. We will be reaching out. So in the city of Socorro, we do have a victim's advocate's office okay, uh, that the police department has. Um, so as part of our counseling uh, services that we do offer, we will have the victim services uh, individual reach out to the victims of that, um, those events, because obviously they can be very traumatic. I believe it was the pickup truck that was the initial. Yes, ma'am. The black one, right? I believe so. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Anything else? We're good? Okay. Victor? Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll be doing it in Spanish now. I'm not sure if our English stations want to stick around. Um, I don't think she's going to be available for private interviews afterward. Um, so thank you all for joining us, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the Spanish ones. Um, bear with me. Give me one second. I'll give them a second to move their stuff out so that way you can get our audio pretty clear. Yeah, go for it. 